Welcome to the snapshot of The Dichotomy of Leadership, Balancing the Challenges of Extreme Ownership to Lead and Win by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. Here we explore the key insights from the dichotomy of leadership. Introduction The horrors of war are traumatizing and inhuman. They are also the toughest school anyone can attend. As graduates with honors, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin have internalized the subtleties of tactical combat and then some. Above all, they learned the value of leadership and the humility required to maintain it. To be an effective leader, one must be an effective follower. Put another way, in order to give orders, you need to understand what it means to take them. Finding balance between too much aggression and too little is at the philosophical core of this snapshot. When facing thick enemy fire, survival depends on your ability to be cool under pressure. In the hierarchy of a SEAL platoon, this is only possible when leadership is given at all levels. When everyone feels they have a voice and knows their voice will be heard, equilibrium becomes possible. Having a voice, however, means also owning up to your mistakes and to those taking place under your command. Being candid and forthcoming about your weaknesses leads to innovation, improvement, and progress. Take any one of these principles too far, and positions get compromised. Effective leadership is a continual process of negotiation. No leader can manage everything, which is why balance is the absolute foundation. Balancing People A young SEAL lies gravely wounded in a military hospital thousands of miles from home. Despite the prospect of losing his leg, he wants nothing more than to stay. Letting his team down just isn't an option. Willink, as his commander, is heartbroken for the boy, whose selflessness is as instructive as it is futile. Fighting against the pity welling up inside, Willink deems it best to get this dedicated soldier back home, where he'll receive far better medical care than is available on base. It's a painful reminder that, while he's there to protect his men, he's also putting them in harm's way at every turn. The members of his unit are simultaneously his children and his brothers, a relationship so deep that inevitable losses tear everyone to emotional shreds. Each person killed in action undermines any delusions of omniscience. The integrity of the team matters more than their individual lives. Every casualty is a major blow, but in accepting their responsibility in those lost lives, those who survive earn their keep as leaders. The mission is bigger than all of them combined. It's a profound dichotomy to swallow, caring so much about your time that you're willing to risk it for the mission. But if a leader's only purpose under fire were to offer protection, then nothing would ever be accomplished. The same holds true in business. If by leadership you mean mitigating risk at every turn, you will never innovate. Back in the field, Willink is realizing that his junior leaders have never stepped up to the challenge of leadership because he hasn't allowed them to do so. Only when he concedes some of that leadership does he see how different operations might work, or not work, in tandem, and gain a better grasp of intelligence. Hence, a shift from extreme ownership to decentralized command. Somewhere between micromanaging and employing a hands-off approach is the fulcrum on which the ideal leader sits. Symptoms of micromanaging include teams who are less likely to act without orders, waiting for solutions instead of coming up with them, failing to mobilize during an emergency, fear of being bold, a lack of creativity, self-compartmentalization, settling into passivity as a default. To solve these issues, you must focus on mission goals and priorities, oversee without dictating, and observing how your team reacts under pressure. Symptoms of hands-off approach include lack of vision, little or no coordination, team members who exceed their brief, lack of coordination, nearsightedness when it comes to strategic trajectory, a competitive approach to leadership. In business, you can diffuse these problems by outlining your company's mission in simplest terms, setting clear boundaries, and assigning specific leadership roles across the board. While seemingly endless details imposed by an overbearing leader bog people down and kill motivation, the disadvantages of being too forgiving can be equally detrimental to your business. In order to strike the right balance between enforcing the rules and allowing them to bend, you must have leadership capital in your toolkit. Leadership capital means acknowledging your limits as a leader. It means not wasting time lording your authority over insignificant things, instead building trust among your team slowly and surely. It's not merely a question of being accountable. 
but also being prepared to answer the why question at any given moment. If, for example, a CEO were to demand that everyone turn off their cell phones during meetings, but enforce this rule only because they wanted it that way, employees would naturally feel that their leader was imposing on their routines. Reveling in one's power for the sake of it isn't sustainable business practice. But if that same CEO explains, clearly and succinctly, why a no-cell phones policy would be beneficial to productivity, everyone knows where they stand in relation to the larger goal. Balancing the Mission In the grind of SEAL training, less capable trainees tend to get tasks saturated. When this happens, they lack the confidence to prioritize and execute because they've lost sight of their priorities. Those who struggle to get through their training typically do so for no lack of passion. It's more often because they haven't been properly guided to success. Thus, leaders must take it upon themselves to recognize talent when they see it, nurture it when those who possess it don't, and allocate it properly in the field. The most effective leaders, then, prepare rookies and veterans alike to handle the most dramatic real-life situations. Training is invaluable in that regard, because it might just be the only time in a soldier's life when mistakes don't have fatal consequences. Those who make them learn just how lucky they are to have the opportunity to be reprimanded, and the strong will orient themselves in service of solutions from there on out. A genuine sense of, and respect for, leadership is more valuable than the deadliest weapons, tactics, and confidence. The most effective training is built on the same leadership principles that would be expected in actual combat. It's challenging, yet realistic. A time to hammer out inconsistencies, mistakes, and bad habits. It's about pushing trainees outside their comfort zone to see how they react to their own errors, but not so far that solutions are impossible. Comfort zones are not places for growth. Whether you're organizing a blitz against insurgents in Baghdad or hustling your team to meet a deadline, you must be realistic, repetitive, and principled. Just as a team of SEALs are as good as dead without a clear sense of direction, it falls upon any senior project manager without faith in their frontline leaders to train them better. Understanding potential risks and determining which ones are worth exploring is critical to success. A little risk is game-changing. Too much is suicidal. And if you think that's nerve-wracking, imagine yourself in Willink's shoes, trying to distinguish his own seals from a group of friendlies who've just shown up unannounced, disguised in local clothing. He relays the situation to his Overwatch element leader, who follows suit, only adding to the tension. It's a stark reminder of something Willink has always conveyed in the training process. Always know where you are. With some decisive and quick thinking, Willink and his team managed to capture an insurgent population and its weapons cache. In this case, the solution required aggression. Controlled aggression. Not reckless and violent, for fear of collateral damage, but proactive. Aggressive leaders understand their place in any given moment. They value well-considered strategy and analysis. It's no different for the CEO considering expansion. Without a careful and honest assessment of company balance sheets, goals, and resources, progress is next to impossible. An undetermined risk cannot be overcome. Effective leaders know how to observe and assess without feigning omniscience. Enough discipline is vital, but too much of it puts its hands around adaptability's neck. Case in point, a business relying on its phone sales force to acquire customers is in crisis mode. Sales are plummeting and the phone calls aren't helping. The problem is that the salespeople are too good at their job. They have their scripts perfectly memorized, answers to every rejection at the ready, all of which means they're devoid of personality on the phone. They have become robotic about their work. Other factors, such as a minimum call quota, are encouraging salespeople to focus on quantity over quality. There is, in essence, an excess of discipline. It all comes down to a lack of proper training and to a micromanaging mentality that keeps employees from doing what they are, in theory, best at, being themselves. Meanwhile, in Baghdad, Willink's men are doing the opposite, lightening their load by removing heavy pieces of armor, especially backplates, for the sake of convenience, and because their confidence tells them it's okay. You won't find me running from the enemy. Seeing that his men are cavorting around with less protection, he could easily blame them. Instead, he owns up to the fact that the fault is his for being so lackadaisical about gear inspections in the first place. It's a wake-up call to lead better. By reminding them that they can't ever know where the enemy might be at every moment, they concede. He has encouraged them to see the value of protocol and found a way to make them want to follow it. Accountability is well and good, but it cannot work alone. 
When everyone knows the answer to why they do the things they do, there's no need to helicopter them in the interest of improved performance. Accountability without empathy leads to a surplus of supervision, time better spent on logistics, analysis, and growth. Accountability is just one star in a constellation of approaches working in tandem for the whole. Balancing Yourself Looking back on his combat experience, Babin cultivates a deep respect for split-second decisions. Such decisions are only good as the training behind them and spotlight the importance of understanding the terrain as you go. You can prepare all you want by looking at maps or surveying potential combat zones, but you'll never know the details until you touch down on the field and let its details speak to you. Successful operations require the trust of subordinates whose own experience can lead to better knowledge. During his own training, Babin once asserted authority over a petty officer who was beyond confident that a strategy for boarding and clearing a ship was exactly what the mission required. Babin chose to ignore it, learning only after the fact that he should have followed the officer's suggestion. He learned a vital lesson about following, one that all leaders should remember. They, too, will always have people to answer to. The chain of command must never be broken. In business, this means treating every boss with the same respect your subordinates would expect of you. Without it, no boss will ever trust you, value your opinion, or give you the resources needed to fulfill your assigned tasks. One must plan not only for success, but also for failure. That said, overplanning can actually hinder your mission. While unexpected obstacles can and will arise, contingency plans can only cover so much. Understand that the strategies put in place before you probably exist for a reason. They've been proven over time. That doesn't mean you can't innovate. It means only that your boss must give you the tools to do so, just as you should to whomever is under your watch. These are times to resist and challenge, but these must be selective and strategic. There's only so much ammunition to go around. Conclusion Effective leadership requires humility. That doesn't mean you must be passive, but honest about limitations. Put together a master team to compensate for your deficiencies. Be aware of details but not so immersed in them that you lose track of the bigger picture. As on the battlefield, your gun sight limits your vision, which is why, as a leader, you should step back now and then to survey what others might be missing. The point of extreme leadership is, ironically enough, to avoid extremes. Tip the scales too far in one direction, and the rest falls away. Just remember these golden rules. 1. Being aware of dichotomies is the first step to balancing them. 2. Be engaged enough to recognize when the scales are tipping. 3. Don't overcorrect. 4. Don't delude yourself into thinking that equilibrium, once achieved, will stay that way. And 5. Prioritize the mission. About Jocko Willink and Leif Babin While serving as U.S. Navy SEAL officers, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin experienced some of the most challenging combat imaginable. Off the battlefield, they have translated lessons learned on it into strategies not only for the benefit of future SEALs, but also for those in need of a leadership boost in their personal and professional lives. They know better than most that even within the military, there are bad apples, and have used that knowledge to help businesses in the civilian sector. In 2012, Willink and Babin founded Echelon Front, a training company focused on building teams and skill sets within the corporate sector, and in that capacity, have given thousands the ammunition they need to excel. Thank you for listening to the snapshot of The Dichotomy of Leadership by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. If you liked what you heard, then make sure to explore the rest of our snapshot library to continue gaining key insights from nonfiction books in a matter of minutes. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you liked what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.